So this one was a team effort. And if you guys know anything about what we do and, and sort of the concept here, if you look around our showroom at any given point, I would say 80% of the cars are cars that we chased. Um, the other day I was showing someone around the showroom and there was a Mercy SV. I was like, yep, I've chased that for six years. And there was another car I chased for four years and another car I chased for eight years. And you know, I'm a huge believer of manifestation and I'm a massive, massive believer of not giving up. Um, we actually have the motto, never ever give up on the side of the building. And uh, if you guys know a little bit about my story and where I've come from, I do not believe in giving up. So uh, this is one of those stories. Uh, we actually had uh, an older YouTube video about this. Actually, we offered a reward and there's gonna be four, maybe five lucky people uh, that are gonna be get a reward and are responsible for helping us get this car. And we have found, and it is sitting in Miami, uh, probably one of the best AMG hammers in the world, the McKelly Alboreto uh, AMG hammer. So, uh, such a cool car, such a special car, and I'll give you a little background. Uh, you can watch the previous video, but essentially there's probably today, let's call it 30, 40 AMG hammers that exist in the world, and essentially what it was um, is it really was the car that put AMG on the map you think about historically, you know, tuning companies and, you know, before AMG was purchased by Mercedes, AMG was taking these massive V8 engines. Uh, they were putting on, you know, uh, you know, four cam, you know, four cam heads, you know, two cams on each side, uh, you know, 32 valve. And these cars were pumping out f almost 400 horsepower and they were doing like 200 miles per hour. So these cars, these Mercedes cars that AMG were building were actually faster than Lamborghinis, faster than Ferraris. Um, and these cars were almost like $200,000 in the 1980s. So you had to be someone completely insane, completely, I would say, you know, what a, an expression of the excessive 1980s are these cars. And when you think about these cars for a period of time, uh, you know, after they were new, many of these cars got so cheap and they got destroyed. Um, people didn't care about them. You know, they, they ended up driving them as daily drivers. They'd blow the engines. You know, uh, they were just destroyed and finding them even today is super rare. We had been lucky enough. Um, we had actually discovered two of the original prototypes that came into the U.S. If you guys remember the black on blue car, uh, now it's one of the, in the biggest collections in the U.S. And the original silver prototype that we had learned that Hartmut um, from Rentec, who was one of the original uh, technicians for AMG North America, he actually, that was the actual silver car, the prototype uh, that broke, I think it was 200 miles per hour. So really, really important cars. We had found those cars, but we had been searching, I think for three or four years now. Um, we had gotten an email uh, from a gentleman by the name of Florian, uh, and, and he was out of France, and his email address was wrong when I tried to respond to him. And he actually said that he had an AMG hammer. It was delivered new to Michele Alboreto, the famous Formula One driver who passed away a few years ago. And this car um, had low mileage, he, basically a really excellent example. And there was even rumors, and still we don't know if this is true, that at one point it was actually a pace car for some F1 races, which would have been really exciting if anyone can find those photos, we'll even pay a reward for those photos, or if anyone can help us with that information. Um, so we knew this car existed. Uh, he described the car incredibly well, but we could not reach him. Uh, I had chased him for years and years and years, and then Albert and I, we produced a video to find the guy. Um, Albert got, I guess someone wrote a comment on the video. Albert reached out to that guy who put him with another guy that knew Florian. Long story short, all of you guys helped us, um, and then Steven from our team ended up talking back and forth with the current owner at the time for, I don't know, it's been like five or six months. Um, trying to negotiate the car, trying to, you know, inspect the car. We had COVID restrictions. We inspected the car. Then it, you know, all these different things to get in the way. But that is just how this business goes. It's, it's not always as simple as, you know, finding a car. Um, it's not like buying a new Ferrari where you, you know, can go on cars.com and look for a white car, look for a red car. You have to plant the seeds 
you have to almost be a private investigator. So really, really proud of our team and, and, and all of our followers that helped us. And, and we finally, about a month ago, we finally were able to buy the car, pay for the car. And at the time I was so excited that I said, oh my God, we gotta just fly the car here. Um, and, and it was sort of weird that one of my colleagues in Europe reached out to me sort of the same week saying that he had found another AMG original car. And if you know about these original AMG cars, you know that people didn't keep their paperwork. I mean, these cars were owned by celebrities, uh, you know, rock stars, playboys, not the traditional guy keeping his records together in a binder or anything like that. You know, I could tell you a ton of stories, but if you look at the name, uh, you know, the former owner of a lot of these cars, there were some pretty eccentric people. Um, one of them was Mike Tyson at one point. So I could go down a list of people, ball players, um, some even some early hip hop artists. Uh, so, so what was so cool was he was able to find an early SEC, so the two door car, um, not a hammer, uh, you know, basically an early SEC, and he, that car came with full documentation uh, showing when the car went to AMG in Germany, uh, and basically the body kit was installed, a six liter engine was installed, a single overhead cam car, wheels, suspension, exhaust, etc. So we were able to find that car. We, we sort of rushed to purchase that car. We had it inspected, we purchased it, and then we decided that we were gonna fly both cars together here for the first time on US soil. Um, it was a little hard getting flights. The, the world, you know, shipping is a little crazy right now. But I would say it was probably the, the, the most incredible morning when I got a text message uh, from, from our shipper. And he said, hey, they've just arrived in Houston. And he sent me a great photo, which I know Albert will edit into this, of the two cars on a rack. Uh, they were released from customs. And we, sent, we had a, a, a local photographer um, I think it's capturing the machine or captures the machine. Thank you again, uh, who photographed the cars uh, for us. And he did a really great job. And, and then obviously the cars came here. And I would say that, you know, there's something about, you know, these cars today and something about these cars, I think historically, uh, these cars are just so undervalued. Um, you know, these were the first cars that were hitting 200 miles per hour back in the 80s. These were the cars that were on the cover of magazines. And when you think of how the tuning world changed the manufacturers, I mean, look, the manufacturers ended up buying the most important tuners. Um, Roof today is one of the most important brands uh, in the world when you think of the automotive world. And you look at what roof cars are trading for. I mean, a few cars just traded at $2 million, uh, you know, 1.5, a million dollars, $2 million. I think these early AMG cars are just so so cool. And when you think about the hammer specifically, a lot of people misunderstand what the hammer means. They, they see an SEC or they see another car with a big AMG engine. They say, oh, it's a hammer. And it's actually not. Um, what the hammer is, is essentially it's the 124 chassis. So it's the smaller chassis. Um, it came in a, a two door, it came in the sedan and it came in the wagon. And it was basically the smaller, lighter chassis where AMG shoehorned uh, what was either their 5.4, 5.6 or 6.0 engine uh, with the dual overhead cams, uh, 32 valve, 385 to 400 horsepower into the little car. Um, they actually had to uh, remove the firewall, modify the firewall, modify different parts of the car to actually make the engine work. So AMG did that to what we say, like I mentioned, 30 to 40 cars. And these cars are really the cars that made it to the cover of magazines. Now, they also put that engine into the SEC. They put it into the SEL. They even put it into a, a few SLs. And, and I think if you talk to most historians today, uh, they'll say there's probably about 200 of those cars in the world with the six liter engine, uh, with the dual overhead cam uh, that exists today. Now, we are in the process, and Stephen is leading this project, to put together an AMG registry just because we are that big fans of these cars. They're that important to history. And what's left today is really hard to determine. These cars are rare. Uh, you know, no one has records. Everyone's lost this. Um, and we're hopefully going to take you guys on another very cool journey. Um, our goal is to interview some old guys that were part of AMG North America, AMG Germany in the 80s and 90s. And maybe we have found an interesting discovery of, of something really important to the AMG world, which we will share with you guys. Um, but I just had to share with you that we discovered the Michele Alberto AMG Hammer, um, and it's here with us now in Miami. 
We've got a ton more content on the car coming. Uh, it is not for sale. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, we've, we've determined uh, that it is gonna go to a very, very important collector, a young collector, and, and he's a dear, dear friend, and he's building a great AMG collection. So I've just, we're gonna figure it out. Um, the car needs to go to him, it needs to stay locally. Uh, we need to be able to share it with you guys, show it. Uh, we sort of wanna do some you know, cosmetic uh, refinishing and refinish the wheels and do a big service. And then we are gonna take you guys for a badass drive in the car, I promise. There will be uh, some smoky tires uh, in effect uh, for that video. Um, but I had to share this with you guys. Um, thank you guys again. I want to stress, do not give up in whatever you're searching for, uh, whether it may be uh, a career, whether it may be, uh, you know, a car, whatever it is, don't give up um, and, and manifest it because I do believe it works. So plant the seed and believe it'll happen.